Welcome everybody. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Thanks for joining in. Hope you had a good first hour this class. Great. Uh, so before we resume uh, with our session for today, uh, can I request uh, one of us to uh, just uh, start us off with a word of prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have, Jesus. We invite your Holy Spirit to guide us and to fill us with our understanding and wisdom as Pastor Roshan teaches. Help us to not just listen to it, but to apply it in our lives and to do great things for you down here on this earth, Jesus. I pray for each and every one of my classmates over here. I bless them in the name of Jesus. And we also pray for a good network connection throughout the class. Be with us and guide us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Jafina. Okay. Um, hey, once again, I hope you all are doing well, guys. Uh, and I uh, hope you've been able to learn something from this course um, so far, the local church um, from the beginning of understanding uh god's vision his idea his uh, his desire his heart for the church um and knowing that it's a, it is his blueprint and uh, the importance of us uh, being able to follow uh and for us to follow the blueprint um is uh, pretty crucial right and so uh we've uh, started with the second section of this whole book on talking about different facets of the house of god um, so we've been following the, uh, one of the APC publications, the House of God, for this entire course. Um, and so uh, we look at uh, chapter 9 from the second section uh, of the course, from uh, page 55. Right, the family of God. Okay, so um, the house of God, uh, what we will learn in this chapter is uh, we will look at the house of God as a spiritual house. Okay, and what the Bible has to say about it and what are some of the things that we can learn um, to uh, see that happen in our own churches and whatnot. Okay, so um, in several places in scripture, we see the term a house of God or household, uh, which is being used. Um, this is to refer to a corporate body. And it's also in line uh, to a spiritual house. That's what it means, a house of God or household. Um, in scriptures refers to um, God's house as a spiritual house. Okay, So as we see in Galatians um, chapter 6, uh, verse 10, it says, therefore we have, uh, as we have opportunity, uh, let, us do to, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 says, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Okay, uh, I really like the way it progresses. Um, house of God, which is the church of the living God. Household, house of God, church of the living God, a spiritual house. Right, uh, the pillar and ground uh, of the truth. Um, and this, uh, the next scripture is, uh, we are in chapter 9, Zelatoli, page 55. Okay, mm, you're welcome. Uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. Okay, there we go. Right. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Um, there are so many different things that you can take off from that verse, and that verse has been used uh, for as a context for uh, in 
in so many different studies uh, for worship and and us as uh, you know people of God having an identity as a holy priesthood and whatnot. But in this context, in this very chapter, we are looking at it, uh, looking at those two specific words: their spiritual house. Okay, uh, we are being built up a spiritual house, right? And so the word house uh, in Greek is oikos, uh, which simply means dwelling, right? A dwelling place, oikos, right? Uh, what are the other, uh, uh, another example uh, that comes to my mind when I use the word dwelling place is the tabernacle, right? Uh, the tabernacle um, simply was simply, the meaning of it is the dwelling place, the house of God. Uh, right, so it's it's a sanctuary. Okay, and then we see uh, in John chapter one uh, the whole thing we see, and the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, made his dwelling among us. He, in other words, he tabernacled around us. And if you have to go more deeper to the root meaning of it, he pitched his tent among us. That's what it is. Um, right, and so uh, here we see that. The in the Greek, um, so the word the word for the house is dwelling, right? And so we are being built up as a spiritual house. We are a family, uh, the family of God. Okay, we belong to the same family of God, and you can see that in multiple scriptures. I just referred to John chapter one verse twelve. Uh, he made you know he pitched his tent. He tabernacled uh, with us. He made himself one among us. He didn't have to. But he did, right? And he communed with us. He broke the bread, and he, you know, he had that supper with us. And so, uh, and in all of that, as we see that from just, just like what we saw from John chapter one verse twelve, he tabernacled, and then we go on to see that, of course, he did it. Of course, he would do that for us. Why? Because he taught in Matthew chapter 10, verse 25, we see that he is the head of the family, he or the master of the house. Right? And so it says, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher or a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Belzebub, how much more will they call uh, those of his household? Okay? Um, so the Greek word there, is oikodespotes, master of the house, or the head of the family, or the head of the house, use the household, right? The, um, so head of the family, basically, that's what it is. And so we pause there and we see, okay, by understanding that we are a family of God, and the house of God, or the local church, is a spiritual house, right? The house of God is a spiritual house and suddenly our perspectives uh, starts changing and it changes even more uh, when we see that, okay, it's Jesus is the head of the house, right? And, and the whole thing takes a different approach. The way we do certain things uh, when we realize, okay, certain person is the head of your family, okay, you are always aware of that person's presence, uh, of that person's desires, of that person's likes and dislikes, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So everything that we do now uh, is all you know, keeping that person's presence in mind. And here we see that Jesus is the head of the family. Right. So uh, uh, let's go to the next page, page fifty-six. Um, so I'm just going to skip those last bottom part. Um, so having understood that we are a spiritual house, a family, we are God's family, right? Um, and then we and we look at a, a couple of things that the three important implications of the local church being a family. And what are those three implications? Now, uh, every family has, uh, you know, its certain values, cultures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we as his family what are some of those things okay so the first thing is uh, a proper way to conduct yourself in the family <clears throat> now um, every family is different I'm talking about now not the spiritual family I'm talking about the actual families that you know we are part of we are all blessed with um, 
and so having said that you know everybody behaves differently in a certain family and sometimes when we go when we are invited to another person's house as guests we see how that family functions and how they conduct themselves in uh, amongst themselves in that house and it's like uh, it's like wow so that's so beautiful i think we should do that too and sometimes it's a shocker it will be a culture shock it's like what is happening in this family right now you know so they conduct themselves a little differently uh, you know and so uh, some of the basic thing basic things uh, indian family is indian you know <laughs> uh, you leave your footwear out uh, and you don't climb on the bed with your shoes and small stuff like that uh, you know that's all our simple um, expressions or you know of how you conduct right when there are elders in the uh, elders there how do you say it how do you you know and all of that and similarly so paul writes to timothy i uh, in timothy first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 say we must learn that means someone is teaching so let's pause there okay so <laughs> we must learn and that means we are being taught and for us right now we are being taught from the word of god right we must learn how to conduct ourselves in the house of God. That is, as part of the family of God. God's people need to be taught, right? And trained on how to behave as part of the family of God. I, just a little while ago, I used the word tabernacle for the word dwelling. That's what that's what tabernacle uh, tabernacle meant in the Old Testament is the dwelling place, isn't it? And in when you when, as you read through the book of Numbers and Leviticus and whatnot, you will see, um, I know the if you if you just magnify and focus towards the Levitical priesthood, they just couldn't wear anything and go into the house of God, isn't it? It's like okay, this today I feel like wearing this. Uh, I woke up a little late. I forgot to iron my shirt, so I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna wear a polo t-shirt and a jeans because the nobody can see the wrinkles in the jeans, and uh, uh, and I'm gonna walk into the house of God. Um, yeah. What did I hear a name? Man? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't that it doesn't work like that uh it didn't work like that isn't it and the old testament a god was very specific the priests were supposed to wear a certain things a certain way a different certain color right all of that represented demonstrated was an expression of how you conduct right that's just an outward thing and then it goes i mean what paul is telling timothy is something beyond the way of how you appear and whatnot right it's it's about everything like you're you, you are the leader now timothy your character is being watched your integrity is being watched everything that you you know uh, you what you do is going to be watched right um and, and and so we have to be very mindful of it isn't it um there was this time uh we had to go on a youth missions uh jp no john wasn't there uh we had to go to um darampur um orissa um so we had took a a team of 10 people 10 young people to barampur orissa to uh, minister and uh, we had a briefing session with pastor nancy she is the head of the missions uh, you know she was saying uh, hey guys you're going from uh, an urban city a city like bangalore to uh, your audience is going are going to be a little different uh, they are going you know from the rural areas and whatnot so uh, and she was giving a certain set of instructions to the ladies as to what to wear and you know how to appear and whatnot and and to the men as well um, and and when we landed there I said, okay, guys, here's the th deal. There are about 200 odd young people uh, for that conference, right? And we are all, uh, our, the average age group of the team that, uh, that we took and went was uh, 23, 24. So these guys are also young. Okay, like, that's the average, like 22, 23. And I told them that uh, all these 200 young people that, they, that you see, uh, that you will be ministering to, uh, they don't know that you are only part of a core team. That, okay, you are volunteering, you're coming, you know, you've taken a day off from work. They don't know all that. They don't see all that. They don't need to. But uh, all they know is that you are from APC. That means for them, there are 10 pastors have come from APC. And so you will be under the microscope, like the way you sit, uh how often you check your phone everything will be uh watched observed 
that means simple terms how you conduct yourself during the time of the seminar will be observed right and so that's the first thing a proper way to conduct yourself uh, in the family it's, it's a very important thing for all of us uh, as leaders uh, some of us are already leaders uh, and you know and whatnot so uh, we got to be mindful of that as Paul is teaching here so there are things we must do uh, and things we must not do <laughs> uh, I'm just reminded uh, you know Amy pastor's wife pastor Ashish's wife uh, she's uh, she's awesome uh, you know so there was a nice play going on in the church and she she was sharing this uh, she's like she's asking pastor permission can I take my phone and take a video I found it just so cute and she was saying that so even just using the phone uh, to take a video uh, it was like um, you know she wanted to make sure it was okay and whatnot so that was just to honor it's just such a beautiful uh, thing but all of that also matters isn't it uh, and through the um, through the service uh, you know some of the leaders are especially you know past Ashish you know you if you look at him, nobody will think that he even has a mobile phone because it, it will not bear any, any vicinity, <laughs> you know, uh, and close to him. So, uh, you know, and how many times we const some of us we constantly check our phones during the services, and you know, some of the things will be genuine because we have to coordinate a lot of things. But then some of the things are just you know time pass. Um, you know, I'm just bored. You know, I don't like the sermon because I'm but I'm going to be reading from the book of uh, Lamentations. <laughs> <laughs> right so our conduct is very important um and so uh, remember we are talking about the there's just the three important implications of the local church uh, right so conduct is very important and uh this is a big one right boundaries between natural and the spiritual <clears throat> Okay. boundaries between the natural and the spiritual as soon as we say that you need to imagine that there is a spectrum I have a scale, thankfully. Okay, um, so uh, this my friend gave me the scale. It says Liverpool. I don't like Liverpool, and he gave this to irritate me. But this is what I could find. But <laughs> there's there's a natural end, there's a uh, you know the spiritual end of it, right? So, um, <clears throat> like it it is possible, and it has happened in uh, and it can happen in many churches where. Uh, because of immaturity and whatnot, and they will understand. Okay, hey, we are a spiritual family. So uh, when can I move into your house, brother? Because we are family, right? <laughs> uh, you know, there's no boundary, uh, isn't it? It's like, hey, we are family, right? Uh, just uh, you know, just loan me some money, or you know, can I stay in your house for like say six months, <laughs> and then one year maybe, uh, you know. Yeah, I am your sister in the Lord, and therefore I have spiritual claim over your natural inheritances. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, sure. You know, let me just sign the papers. No, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> dangerous. Okay, so if you don't understand the boundaries, uh, you know, and Paul explains this in in length at Second Thessalonians chapter three six to sixteen. I would uh, it's in the notes, and I would encourage you to uh, go through that whenever you can. So, uh, you know, understanding the boundaries uh, again, once again, it comes by with the teaching, isn't it? Um, so, I just go back to that verse that Paul uses to Timothy: "Is we must learn, and for some of them to learn, they must be taught." Right, and so even the boundaries has to be taught. It's very important, right? Um, I am not sure if this I've mentioned this with uh, this class or the other class. Forgive me if I've already mentioned this. Is um, if you're especially leading a team and whatnot, you should um, assume that there is no such thing as common sense. There or there is no such thing as over communication. For example, if I'm leading a team. If, right if I'm leading a team I'm not going to just assume okay, what might seem what something can seem like a common sense to me will not seem like common sense to everybody in the team and you'll be surprised to know okay how many of them don't get it as common sense and so there is no such thing as uh, there's no such thing as over communication and so what might seem like a proper boundary to you as a leader 
will definitely not seem like a boundary to uh, anybody else. <laughs> okay, so it is very important for us, for you as leaders, uh, for us as leaders, uh, as, or as ministers, to set the boundaries. That's one thing, and also to communicate that boundaries is another thing. And you know, for your congregation to be taught, for your team to be taught about this. So, uh, uh, yeah, don't just think, okay, this just because this is common sense to you, it's not going to be common sense to the whole thing. Right. So how many times have you said this? This is common sense, dude. Why can't you get it? You know, that's because it didn't occur to them as you know, so it doesn't occur to people. So it's very important. Right. Uh, so boundaries, very, very important, uh, especially in the spiritual family. It's super important. Uh, you know, don't 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 let it hold you back by thinking just because you're thinking, OK, what will this person think if I set this boundary? OK, that is the first step towards digging your own grave is you not setting your boundaries. Okay, <laughs> okay. So be aware of that. Um, and the third thing is, uh, a family has culture. It has values, purposes, and dreams. Right. Every every family has a certain culture, a certain values. Right. Uh, it may look like us. I mean, whatever. It's a, a culture of praying, a culture of worship. Um, a good culture, bad culture, whatever. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but. The point is, uh, there is a culture that is being set. Right? If you don't set a culture as a leader, culture will be set for you by the people that you lead. It could be good or it could be bad. But uh, yeah, majority of the times, it could be bad. That's something that you might not like. So uh, breaking that culture is a huge thing. And the culture is a big deal, guys. Why do we emphasize uh, on, on creating a kingdom culture? Uh, you know, because it's it's a healthy culture, isn't it? Um, one of the examples um, that one person gave was um, a bad culture. For example, in a in a good setting, in a good environment, is like serving good food on a dirty plate. Okay, uh, how many of you would have that? I don't know, but <laughs> but that's the you know that's what a bad culture is like. Okay, uh, so culture is important because it helps people or it teaches people understand each other and shows what is the accepted way of doing things in a certain environment. Okay, I'm just quoting from of the notes, right? Culture is important because it helps people or it teaches people, it reveals to people to understand each other, right? Understanding each other is uh, what? What are the other way, uh, other words of understanding each other? Uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, understanding each other. Opposite of that is misunderstanding with each other. No. So, uh, what creates misunderstanding? Miscommunication. Forget communication. Miscommunication. Assumption of it's being understood and whatnot, things like that, right? World war has happened because of miscommunication. So <laughs> a lot of things can go wrong, okay? Um, the culture is important, to say the least, okay? So the point says that a family has culture, values, purpose, and dreams. Similarly, a local church has its own distinctive culture, okay? And how is culture defined? It's defined by its values. Purposes and dreams. Okay. Every church, every local church has its own distinctive culture defined by its values, purposes, and dreams. Uh, values could be anything. I mean, for some of you, it can be a good value, bad values, doesn't matter, but it's there. But, and it defines the culture of a church. Uh, right? So if you're leading a ministry, if you're, if you're leading a church, uh, it all comes down to you. What are your values? Uh, what values do you want to instill in the people that you are leading or you're shepherding, et cetera? And uh, the purposes and the dreams, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Uh, some of the cultures are you know, values and purposes and dreams at APC. If, uh, if you don't mind, I just want to go through some of those in the notes. Um, this is the values, the cultures at APC. Uh, what is our culture? Casual, contemporary, creative. Everyone is a minister. That's what we uh, is one of the things that we keep emphasizing, right? It was also uh, emphasized extensively in our last uh, semester's course, healing and deliverance. That everybody can minister healing and deliverance, right? So that's one of the things we emphasize. It the uh, uh, culture is word-based, spirit-led, spiritual yet practical. 
Mm, see the boundary is set right there spiritual yet practical <laughs> okay active energetic dynamic etc so that is our culture what is our, what are our values um integrity in everything that we do excellence in everything that we do uh and we want to be excellent in uh everything in every you know, and pastor keeps instilling this uh it keeps emphasizing on the importance of this to every team, to all the staff, every time we have a staff meeting, in the importance of, uh, you know, in every little things that we do, it has to be excellent, and we have to be excellent in our communication and how we communicate things to our congregation, uh, and how we do go, how we execute, you know, how the media team executes stuff, to how the worship team leads worship. Uh, every team, uh, you know, uh, that's one of the values. Excellent, uh, staying on the leading edge of what God is doing. Uh, opportunity to for everyone unity and cohesiveness relationships uh our purposes okay i mean so those things you can uh, just go through it when you when you want to okay i'm just not gonna go through it all right okay, uh, so you guys with me still alive you're welcome yeah awesome okay all right cool um, so the, just very quickly, once again, the three important implications of a local church being a family that's uh, conducting yourself in the family, uh, knowing the boundaries, and also uh, understanding the culture, the values, the purposes, and dreams, uh, you know, of the church. Okay, and now we move on to the next section in page fifty-eight. Uh, three important family practices. Uh, in a local church, right? Three important family practices in a local church. Right? Just as we spoke about a culture, every family has its own culture, right? I uh, use an example like, you know, praying together and whatnot. Um, it, there are certain, it, it's also similar to the practices. You can use the word culture and, you know, and when it's expressed, you see the practice of it. A family may have a meal uh, together. A family may practice having their devotions together, morning or evening, uh, family time, prayer time, whatnot, right? A family may practice going together every Sunday to church. Uh, doesn't matter who's late or whatnot, uh, right? A family may practice making a Sunday lunch uh, together or, you know, having everyone or having the team over, family over, whatnot, Wh whatever, right? There are different practices, right? Once again, similarly, because of the local, because the local church is a family, uh, there are certain practices that we should pursue consistently, right? Some, some of the good practices, like, uh, I mean, Praying together as a family is a good practice, isn't it? Having a meal together as a family is another beautiful thing, isn't it? Uh, and so some of the things that just you, when you keep doing it, it might seem uh, monotonous and or whatnot, but then, uh, but it's a thing now. It's a family thing, right? Um, so similarly, uh, some of the things that we can instill in, a, in our spiritual house, or what the word tells us is one, Walk in brotherly love. Okay, uh, can someone read uh, the scripture from the notes mentioned, please? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Can someone read that for us? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Thanks, Ruslan. Amen. Yeah, it's so beautiful, right? Um, but re concerning brotherly love, you have uh, no need that I should write to you because you've already been taught. Okay, that means they are learning, right? Uh, about God uh, to love one another, right? So it's instilling that uh walk in brotherly love so apostle paul recognizes that the believers in thessalonica were indeed walking in brotherly love and he is encouraging them to increase more and more right so we, that means we can keep growing in brotherly love uh you know with one another um and and some of the ways that you can express uh, as mentioned in the notes uh, on top of the notes, page 59, is we walk in brotherly love 
by being kind to one another and giving preference to one another but we walk in brotherly love by doing good to those uh, of the household of faith household of faith the house of god spiritual house uh, we walk in brotherly love by supporting the weak and restoring um, the fallen and i don't know about you but all of this uh, i mean uh, it just reminds me of the passage of uh, first corinthians 13 about love isn't it uh, love is love is patient love is kind love is this love is that etc etc right so and this is just an extension of what the chapter is talking about and it's encouraging us to continue to walk in brotherly love in spirit in in the spiritual house of god in the house of god right so that's the first thing walk in brotherly love that's a good practice to pursue as a congregation, as a, as a corporate, as a as a family of God, right? To walk in, uh, to be, to learn, to be kind to one another, uh, to be there for one another, etc., uh, etc. Et Again, okay, all of this keeping in mind uh, the the importance of having healthy boundaries, right? Uh, who said you can't have fun with having healthy boundaries? Right? You can have healthy boundaries and yet have a very healthy relationship, okay? Um, so walking in brotherly love and then keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit right keep the unity that means maintain the unity of the spirit Ephesians 4 3 says endeavoring uh, to keep the unity endeavoring to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace uh, okay uh, peace is uh, an expression as is, uh, is, is the fruit of unity Right when everybody is together, united, okay, they're 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 living together in harmony. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, before uh, the Holy Spirit invades the place, uh, it says they were all gathered together in one accord, in unity, right? Um, and time and time again in the Old Testament, you would read, uh, what for, at least in the Book of Chronicles, uh, you know. In the temple of God that the Solomon builds, you will read that every time they sang in one voice, every time they played together in one, you know, in unity, the spirit would, uh, the spirit of God would fall over that place, and uh, and everybody, you know, could will not be able to stand and whatnot, right? So uh, there is power in unity, to say the least, <laughs> right? Uh, and the endeavoring uh, the word, the verse that it starts with in the Greek, uh, it means. Uh, to use speed, hmm. <laughs> to use speed, that is, to make effort, be prompt or earnest, give diligence or do diligence, uh, be diligent, uh, endeavor, labor, study. Uh, right? That's what endeavoring means. Um, so I'll give you a simple one word or almost two words is proactive. Okay, as that's what it is to to use speed. That is to make effort, right? That's what proactive is. Is what what you do. You are proactively messaging the other person first. You are not being reactive. I mean, let's say, say for example, if someone, uh, I mean, you're you're angry with someone or whatever, right? Uh, you are not waiting for them to apologize, and then you react. Okay, that would be reactive. Uh, but proactive is you taking that initiative to message that person and says like hey you know i think what i did was not right or whatever it is let's just put this behind us so you are being proactive uh you are being proactive uh about taking uh you know caring for the flock that you are leading that you are shepherding uh, you know you you take the initiative to check with them he's like hey how are you doing uh you know how is your walk with god are, are you doing all right how's the family doing or how's the fam doing uh, <laughs> uh you know so it's all about and something about being proactive uh, leads to being united in the spirit it's just keeping keeping a check uh you know with one another leads to unity so make every effort to maintain the unity right uh, some of the pointers that's listed out there is cut the gossip grumbling and murmuring about one another um, and all of that you know from james chapter 5 verse 9 says do not grumble against one another brethren lest you be condemned behold the judge is uh, standing at the door uh, 
three things that uh, was the downfall uh, that God hated was uh, when for the Israelites in the wilderness um, was uh, MCG. MCG. It's a Melbourne Cricket Ground? No, no, no. MCG is <laughs> mumbling, complaints, grumbling. Right? Uh, I was, uh, I was teaching praise and worship for the first years, right? Uh, we are at the chapter where we talk about, uh, you know, if God is enthroned on our praises, uh, who is enthroned on our complaints? And if we are entering uh, his gates with thanksgiving, whose gates are we entering, uh, you know, when we complain and grumble and murmur? Uh, you know, it's, you know, the answer. So, <laughs> right? so uh, let's, let's, uh, let's cut it out because all of that creates a culture. All of that shows the values of a church and, and, whatnot right so um make every effort to maintain that unity so that's the second thing and the third thing right the third uh, important practice all of the three important family practices in the local church first thing everybody walks in brotherly love okay i heard you yeah thank you <laughs> uh keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit right uh make every effort to maintain uh unity uh harmony um, rest and peace amongst one another um right and then finally everyone works everyone works um okay uh, have you all like done this major house cleaning where everybody in the family was involved in doing something Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, Jeffina, I see you nodding your head. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> well, was it fun or painful? <laughs> it's uh, it's both, huh? <laughs> yeah, so everybody's working, right? Everybody's involved in something, right? Uh wait. Yeah, who likes to work, right? Yeah, who likes to, you know? So yeah, thanks for being honest, both actually both. So it, it's good fun and it's, yeah, it, it, most of the times it's uh, at least twice a year. Uh, Christmas time for sure, everybody's involved. From cleaning the fans, uh, it's like, okay, you do the fan, okay, you do this thing, you clean the windows and uh, I'll vacuum the house, you mop the floor. Uh, clean the garage, all the unnecessary thing from all the stop things, you know. <laughs> but the end result is awesome. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> the end result is amazing. It's like, you know, okay, now let's make the biryani. That also everybody is doing something. It's like, okay, you cut this, you do that, you know. Um, uh, you know, the concept of too many cooks spoiling the broth is out the window. It's like, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets a hands dirty, uh, but it's good fun, isn't it? Um, so everyone, everyone works. Uh, it's a, some something beautiful, uh, isn't it? So once again, as we've been drawing parallels from uh, like a normal, a natural biological family, uh, similarly in the house of God, uh, you know, all of us are part of the local church family. Understand that we have something to do. That we are all gifted in a certain areas. Uh, you know that. That, that we can do that we ought to do right um that's where we serve the church we we you know and in in doing so uh you know this is beautiful verse in uh, i don't know which uh hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 i'm not sure but if if i'm right you can let me know it says that uh when you serve one another we express our love to god you can let me know if if uh, if that's right or not. But I was just reminded of that verse. Um, when we serve uh, one another, uh, we express our love to God. Um, and and I might be wrong about which verse it is, but uh, I... <laughs> but it's, isn't it, isn't that beautiful? In everything that we are doing uh, in the house of God, when we are serving in different areas, from the parking team to uh, you know the front us desk you know welcoming people the first time visitors ushering uh, and whatnot children's church uh, you know ministering to the kids when you are serving in the local church you are telling god i love you 
and and this is so beautiful isn't it and and so in the house of god we all have something to do uh you know and i i tell the team like the worship team or even the setup team and whatnot guys you don't realize what we get to do here in the house of god uh you know from setting the chairs cleaning the rolling the cables and whatnot we will not get to do all of this in heaven and so you know when we do when we do all these things here on earth we are expressing to him that we love him in ways we cannot express it to him in the heavens right we are giving him something here on earth that we cannot give him in heaven uh, and so uh, and and that's a beautiful thing isn't it guys uh, when we serve when we when we serve our church it's just beautiful it's not just mundane work thing like oh i have to do this why do i have to clean the toilets and whatnot but then uh, I mean, when you realize that you know you are expressing your love to him uh, in all the small things that you do, it suddenly takes a different shift, different perspective, um, right? So in Galatians chapter six, verse two to five, I'm just reading this off the notes. It says, "Bear one another's burdens, wait, Lord, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to do something," When he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, effort, toil, as in an occupation, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load, task, and service. Right? So uh, everyone works. We all have something to do. Right? Uh, hey, thanks, Jeffina. Uh, there are some areas we are uh, to help one another in some areas we are to be responsible for uh, for as individuals we help one another in carrying things that weigh us down uh, these could be challenges in life uh, struggles difficult situation as it says and such things that any one of us could face from time to time uh, right so just having another person to share with uh, being being available to another person where they can just share these things with you uh, is also another aspect of of this uh, of this point right I I all with me so far guys okay uh, any 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 extra thoughts that you want to share uh, from what we've covered so far or any questions Okay, all right then. Um, so we'll we'll pause here for this uh, session. We'll take a break and uh, we'll join back with. Uh, we will resume uh, from where we left. Okay, cool. All right, you guys take care.